Hey everyone, welcome back to The War Room. This is going to be a quick supplemental video from the first one I just sent out on Guderian's Blitzkrieg, the Learn As We Play series, okay? Uh, scenario one, we talked about mode and movement. We went briefly over the modes, but we didn't really clarify it. And I think that in this game, we really need to clarify it because modes are one of the most important um, parts of an OCS game. All right, there are six of them, six modes, and four of them are voluntary, two of them are involuntary, which means that two of them will only happen if certain conditions exist. The other four, you get to select and choose what happens to them. Now, I have three examples of units here. Uh, these these chits will be used in this scenario. Talk about is combat mode. All right, so combat mode is your, your units are prepared to get into engagements with the enemy. All artillery is uh, no longer stowed, mortars are out, all the weapons and ammo boxes are ready to go. They're not going to be moving fast. They're going to be moving at a slow pace in order to get somewhere or do something, okay, um, in order to engage the enemy. Now, most times out of many, you can tell the combat mode by just looking at the chit okay so on this particular unit you see a seven and a three the big seven the big three seven is the combat okay that's the combat uh number that's his defense and, and combat and three is his movement all right it's less the, the the combat will be bigger than the movement because you know, obviously he's in combat mode now if i flip him to move mode everything reverses if anything he gets more movement and much less for his attack. Okay, now in combat mode, before we go into movement, um, you can move, you can attack, you can do overruns, you can do anything, you can use roads, you can't use rail. Okay, according to Guderian's Blitzkrieg um, Edition 1, you cannot use any kind of rail. Anything else is okay. All right, so that is combat. Next is move mode. A unit in move mode is sacrificing some or all of his capabilities in order to go somewhere quicker. He's not looking to go flat out flank into fighting, but he's looking to go somewhere quicker. He still has uh, a combat mode of some sorts. Okay. Now, uh, before I go any further, this particular unit is a motorcycle cavalry unit. So um, when I flip them over to his uh his combat mode, as you can see, his combat is still less than his movement because he's on motorcycles. So apparently he's much more maneuverable even when he's in combat, but he doesn't have a great strength. So it's just something to show. Um, movement mode, he is allowed to do overruns. He can attack like anybody else. He can use the rail. Simple as that. At the, so that between the two, combat and movement, combat can't use rail, movement can Okay, before we go any further, let's take a look at these colors of these numbers so we can get an idea of what they're telling us. All right, so let me flip one over. Here we go. All right, so if we look at the seventh Panzer unit here, seven and three, so that you know he can only move three uh, movement points. A white number means it is a truck MP. Okay, it's a truck MP. Black numbers means that they are leg MPs, they're on the ground. Okay. They're, they're, they're hoofing it. All right. And if we go over here to the red, okay. The red means track MP. So, you know, you're dealing with something that's on tracks, whether it be a mechanized unit or a tank. Now reserve mode, you're going to choose a unit. Okay. It's not a stack. It's a unit. All right. You're going to choose a unit and you're going to decide if he's going to be on his combat fate side or if he's going to be on his movement side right and then you're going to determine if you want to put him in the reserve you'll place a token that says reserve on top what is reserve mode so here's the thing in reserve mode he can only move half of his movement points all right he cannot move into areas where there are enemies he cannot like move next to an enemy unit so here let's just grab a unit he cannot move next to enemies okay he can't, um, he can't go into reserve while next to enemies. However, if an enemy moves into the spot next to him, the reserve mo mode uh, token goes away automatically. It gets discarded. And he goes into his full combat or move mo uh, mode that he's set in. Okay. Um, what is reserve mode? Let me get rid of this. Reserve mode 
is when you want units to be available for a counter attack or counter movements, okay? If we look at the turn sequence, all right, it says, and if you have Guderian's Blitzkrieg, it's going to be on page two, all right? It says player turn one. After you have your mode determination and you do your movement, and yes, these guys in reserve can move during the movement phase. They just move half the movement allowance, like I said. All right. They then have a reactionary movement. All right. So when the unit, the enemy units move wherever they go, you can release him from reserve and then he gets to go his full spot. All right. So during the reserve movement phase, you can, or the reactionary phase, excuse me, you can choose to release him and then he'll go and attack the enemies where he needs to, where he sees fit. Okay. So think of it as counter action, counter movement. All right. Um, while in reserve mode, however, let's go over those. Um, they may be, we talked about, they may be either on their combat or movement sides. Okay. Um, they can only change that in the mode determination phase. All right. Um, they can only move half the printed movement allowance, I'm reading from the book, during their regular movement phase. They may not move adjacent to enemy units or attack at range. That is, if they're artillery, they cannot attack. If an enemy unit ceases its movement adjacent to a unit in reserve mode, the unit in reserve mode must remove its reserve marker and enter the mode then showing. Then it's called reserve release. The player may release any reserves he desires at the beginning of his reaction phase and his exploitation phase. When releasing a unit, remove the reserve mode marker. The unit is in mode in the mode that was showing, whether it be combat or move. All right, and then they get to utilize their full movement and combat capabilities. Oh. Any reserve mode units which get disorganized, uh, they'll lose their reserve status and have a disorganized marker placed on them. All right, so that's a lot. So basically, if they get disorganized, they're no longer reserve. They're in full combat. And then a disorganized marker will go on top. Real simple stuff. So we're going to talk about um, strategic movement mode. That's going to be uh, this guy right here. All right. So the best way to describe strategic movement mode is, let's say, well, first of all, they have to be on their movement side. Okay, this is their attack side. So they have to be on their movement side, and you decide to place a strategic movement marker onto the chit. So what you're doing is you're going to double this. So now this artillery goes from 16 to 32 spaces he can move or 32 movement points allowed. All right. That's significant. They cannot be in combat. They can attack at half the combat value. So for this particular unit, nine, he's going to be at uh, a four and a half. So four and a half round down. I believe it's round down. I haven't gotten there yet. Okay. Basically, this is the best mode you want to be in if you're coming from the edge of the map and you're trying to move battlefield. You don't want to get caught in the middle of a fight in this mode. This is just to get from where you start to the front lines. Okay, That's the best way to explain strategic movement. These units may move by, by rail, and um, when they get disorganized results, from a, you know, a, a dice roll, they lose the strategic movement and they go back to being normal units when they're disorganized. All right. So now we have two more modes. Okay. You have exploitation and you have disorganized. Okay. These are involuntary. You do not choose to get these certain conditions must be met. So in exploitation, which is this guy right here. Okay. You have to win a battle and it's usually from a dice, a certain, um, uh, combat table roll or from a barrage roll. So if you, you've shot, you know, if you're an artillery unit and you shot, excuse me, um, and you got a really good dice roll, or if you're an infantry and you just did some really good damage, you could place an exploitation marker on your unit. There's a second phase in your turn order of play called exploitation. It allows you to move in, um, do combat all over again. So this is a great way of getting places further while you're attacking your enemy. And that's the only time you can use exploitation is after you've successfully um, attacked the enemy well. If any units that receive an exploitation result in combat 
must already be in combat mode or flip to combat mode. So in order to receive it, you know, like right here, this is movement mode, I'd have to flip it. And then, then it can go back. Then you can use it and, and use that, that benefit. All right, so you cannot attack, you cannot get exploitation unless you're in combat mode or you flip to combat mode. Check. Units that are in disorganized mode can never receive one of these. Um, they can never receive exploitation. All right, so let's talk about the final last thing, and that's disorganized mode. That's this shit right here. All right, so any of these units can receive one depending on a certain dice roll, a certain, um, you know, certain result happens and it isn't good, you might get a DG place on one of your units, okay? Um, it has a lot of negative effects, all right? Well, hold on, let's, how do you get them? Let's talk about how you get them. You suffer a DG result on the combat table or barrage table or whenever a unit retreats two or more hexes. So think of that as like you're routing the unit, right? They just, they're completely gone. They can't, uh, they, they, if you're retreating more than two hexes, that's, you know, that's over 10 miles in hex space. So they're pretty much routed. Okay. A unit in DG mode suffers the following effects. It's combat, it's strength, is halved. So for example, obviously this guy here would be now fighting at two, no longer a four. Okay. <clears throat> um, action rating is reduced by one. So this guy's a five, which is pretty good for a motorcycle unit. It would be four now. All right. And, and we didn't talk about these action ratings. We'll talk about that. I'm sure coming up really soon. We got some combat coming up, so we'll, we'll see how that works. All right. Um, DG mark units which retreat into a hex adjacent to an enemy unit loses one step, kind of like Axis Empires, right? So enemy, and I have a DG marker on him, he's going to lose a step, all right? Units marked with a DG marker ignore all exploitation combat results, okay? Uh, units in strategic move or reserve mode which get disorganized, they will lose those markers applied to them. We talked about that, all right? Uh... Units with a DG mode during a friendly mode determination phase can select if they want to stay combat or if they want. So you still have that option. You're just, you're still fighting at a terrible rate. All right. A player removes DG markers on his units, on, on his units automatically during his cleanup phase. And the cleanup phase for the turn sequence is like near the bottom before the second player goes. So it doesn't stay on for long. But during that time, it's it's detrimental. So those are the six modes. Now, I if you're playing along with me, even if you're not playing Guderian's Blitzkrieg or you're trying to learn another game, these are pretty pretty universal throughout the entire OCS experience. Now there's are some you know port stuff. There's some uh, shipping stuff that goes along with some of the later games like Smolensk here, uh, uh, Barbarossa Derailed and other stuff, but uh, for the most part, all the games do follow these six modes. So learn them, understand them, and if you have questions, please comment. Please like and subscribe as well, guys. Have a good one.